So we get back more into the NFL right now. Jeff Kerr, CBS Sports, joins us as promised here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. And Jeff Kerr's appearance on the Bash is being brought to you by the expert solar team of New Jersey, EMT Solar and Roofing, and the Solar Guardians. Start your solar journey today by visiting ESPNSolar.com. And Jeff Kerr joins us right now on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Jeff, how's it going? Uh, pretty good, Josh. Uh, the NFL world is going absolutely bonkers right now. A cut down day and trades, and Eagles aren't helping matters because they got a backup quarterback, even though it was a pretty good trade. All right, so you brought up the quarterback thing, and we'll bring it up real quick here, okay, before we get to the Dickerson McLeod stuff. Here's my position. You know why they traded for Gardner Minshew? One, because Nick Mullins' arm is a noodle at this point after having surgery. And two, because David Caldwell now works in the Eagles' front office. And David Caldwell drafted Minshew. And we saw with Howie, whether it was Joe Douglas, whether it was Andrew Berry, whether it was John Dorsey, whether it's Andy Wydell, and now Dave Caldwell, all these guys get in his ear, and all of a sudden, Howie ends up acquiring guys these people drafted. Exactly. And you know what, Josh? You nailed it right on the head. Dave Caldwell was probably the number one reason. He drafted Gardner Minshew with the six-round pick. He knew all the Eagles needed to do was give up pretty much a six-round pick for a guy who wasn't going to play in Jacksonville anymore. Once Trevor Lawrence was drafted at the number one overall pick, that was it. That quarterback competition was an absolute joke. Uh, my colleague Pete Prisco at CBS said all that did was stunt Trevor Lawrence's development for what it was worth. And you know, playing Gardner Minshew, okay, so you're going to trade him for what? A six-round pick? You could have got a six-round pick for him anyway. Like, he's a proven backup quarterback in this league. And I, I got to be honest with you, Josh, I think the Eagles kind of took him away from the Cowboys because the Cowboys have been in the market for a backup quarterback. Uh, they, they are not happy with Cooper Rush right now. They are not happy with Ben DiNucci, obviously. Ben DiNucci might get cut. So they needed somebody, and the Eagles just kind of said, we'll take Garner Minshew for a six-round pick, no problem. It's a great deal for the Eagles. It's a great deal for the Jaguars. Joe Flacco's been okay this preseason. I'm not going to go wow over a performance against the Jets scrubs, and I'm definitely not – I wasn't impressed with Nick Mullins at all, as you said, Josh. Noodle arm, he, you know, coming off elbow surgery, he wasn't the same Nick Mullins. He was in San Francisco. So this is an excellent trade for the Eagles, and it's clear-cut Gardner Minshew is, is QB2 at this point. Now, I know that there were people – Jeff, listen. I took a personal day for the first time on a Saturday in five years, okay? That happens to be the day that every person – I'm being nice here – decides to text into shows saying that this is all about the show on Watson. Well, I don't know if you saw the video, but last night, Drew Rosenhaus comes out and says, Deshaun Watson's going to the Dolphins, probably. And then today, the Texans come out and say, if Watson's on our team, he's inactive every week. It sounds like more and more that Watson is not coming to Philadelphia, and that's either Miami or Commissioner's Exemplus to me. Yeah, uh, well, one, I think the Eagles were the team. I don't know if you saw the Michael Lombardi report. I can, I don't want to say I can confirm that or deny that because who knows? Michael Lombardi definitely has an in here. And there was a team that offered Houston uh, basically a King's ransom for Deshaun Watson. I have a feeling that was the Eagles, but maybe the Eagles felt they offered too much and Houston never responded. But here's the key to all this. Deshaun Watson has to wave his no trade clause to come here, which he really shouldn't have at this point. I mean, uh, he lost that. In my opinion, he lost that right by all his all-season accusations. But, again, it's in his contract. He has a full no trade clause. He can decide to go wherever he wants to go. And if he really wanted out of Houston that bad, he'd probably be a Philadelphia Eagle right now. But he doesn't want to go there. He wants to go to either the Miami Dolphins, maybe the Carolina Panthers, maybe the Denver Broncos. But if he wants to go to Miami, and Miami's willing to trade for him, so be it. Oh, and by the way, Miami probably doesn't have to give up an extra first-round pick because they have a trade asset. It's to a Ty Guy Viola. Same with the Eagles. They had a trade asset in Jalen Hurts. But, again, I think Houston would rather have two at this point. All right, let's get back to the Eagles specifically. They activated Dickerson. They activated McLeod. Say, this is a big deal, Jeff, because to me, those are two position groups, offensive line and safety. A lot of questions. Start with the offensive line. Obviously, Dickerson can play center and guard. We don't know his full timetable to play. He was at limited at practice today. But what we do know is this. Brett Toth, Andre Dillard, the Raven Clark, Suo Peta, and... Matt Pryor, those are five guys who may or may not be in an Eagles uniform in 24 hours. You know, Josh, I just put in my 53-man roster projection after the Landon Dickerson news. I got Clark making it, 
I got Toph making it. I got Diller making it. I don't think Opez is going to be on this team, and I think they'll they'll probably try to trade Pryor. And you know, again, I got to give I got to give credit where it's due. And you know, I talked to John McMullen about this. The Eagles do really have like thirteen to fifteen linemen that should be on the NFL rosters. All those guys are going to find a home. It just won't be with the Philadelphia Eagles. They are very deep at those positions, and that's where it's going to be tough. Who do you get rid of? Brett Toph deserves to be on an NFL team. Yes, and the Eagles have developed this guy. Like I don't think they really want to get rid of him. And he can play center, he can play guard, he can play tackle. I would keep him around. Suo Peda, I, I ain't see enough of him this preseason to warrant keeping. But again, he deserves to be on an NFL roster somewhere. He's not that bad of a football player. So, unfortunately, he's on the chopping block. Well, Raven Clark, I think the Eagles like him. I think they want as much tackle depth as they can. Dickerson obviously adds a little bit more to the mix here because he's going to compete for a starting job at some point. And Matt Pryor, I think they can trade. He's got plenty of experience there. So, Again, I think you're going to see the Eagles acquire some extra draft picks. Probably they might get the draft pick back that they got for Garner, that, that they gave away for Garner Minshew. That's a very interesting because uh, I've seen a lot of reports going on the last few days that teams are, and Albert Brewer said this in his MMQB article today. I've heard multiple people report this the last few weeks. Teams are calling the Eagles about offensive linemen. And I've already seen Billy Price get traded from the Bengals to the Giants for a player and a conditional pick. That makes me wonder, Jeff, is there a possibility that the Eagles will use one of these offensive linemen to get somebody for the 53-man roster? Oh, they will. They will try to upgrade somewhere. And, you know, when they first trade for Gardner Minshew, I actually thought they were going to trade a player to Jacksonville, like an offensive lineman, for example, because Jacksonville needs that. But, you know, for a six-round pick, I'm like, okay, this is an even better deal. You know, because now you still have Matt Pryor, Sue Opeta, Andre Dillard. you got a bunch of players here that you can fedangle to other teams. And, again, that's credit to the Eagles front office. That's credit to Jeff Statlin. That's credit to everybody on that offensive line coaching staff that develops these guys. And, yeah, you're right, Josh. They will probably trade it for a player at some point, or maybe they might get a higher D3 pick than we, than we expect. We, we're probably thinking, oh, you know, they'll only get six or something, but – if you look at it, they might get a fifth, which is pretty impressive for a guy who's not even going to see the field for them, not even going to make their 53-man roster. Again, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And not that these guys are trash, but they're trash for the Eagles. That's just how deep they are on the offensive line. But I would love to see him try to get like a backup safety, for example. I think that would be a nice little move for them. I don't think they need help at linebacker. D- defensive line, I'm pretty sure they're safe there. Uh, I would like to see, personally, and it, it, this is very rare, but the veteran wide receiver, somebody, anybody, I think they need somebody there. I, I don't think I have them going with six wide receivers for now, but obviously that's going to change. Let's get the safety here because obviously McLeod, his status for week one is still in the air. But, Jeff, we had an entire month where Kevon Wallace was injured on and off. He assigned Andrew Adams to be a special team slash veteran backup. Epps played well this month in games and in joint practices. So did Elijah Riley. So, what what are you doing at safety now that McLeod is activated? I had Elijah Riley making this roster, but they trade for somebody. I don't know if Elijah Riley makes a cut, but here's the thing. I don't know if he can go to the Eagles practice squad because I think someone's going to take him. He had a really good preseason for them. Uh, Andrew Adams, I think, unfortunately, he'll be a veteran cut. He is a good special teamer, but you can find them a dime a dozen. And, you know, the Eagles save some cap room by actually caught him and uh, look i think elijah riley just outplayed him i wouldn't mind with them rolling with marcus epps week one but against that land passing attack you gotta hope rodden claw is back in some way shape or form that way epps can be the number three safety and again this all comes down to Kayvon wallace Kayvon wallace is, as you said josh on and off with injuries that's what concerns me about this position so if they can get a veteran safety in there remember when they traded for rudy ford a couple years ago i'd like to see him get a player like him Jeff Kerr, CBS Sports, joining us here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN at Jeff Kerr CBS on Twitter for all your NFL and Eagles coverage. Joins us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN, being brought to you by EMT Solar and Roofing and Solar Guardians. Jeff, let's look at the Eagles overall. How many changes is this roster going to have in the next several days? Because obviously tomorrow at 4 p.m. is one roster. But whoever plays week one is probably going to be a different roster. It's always like that, Josh. You know, everybody we think is going to be on the But hold on, Jeff. We haven't had 12 days from the initial 53 to the actual start of the season. This gap of time is, honestly, it's ridiculous. I was joking with my bosses at CBS because I'm off Wednesday and Thursday. They wanted to give me, like, a break. And I'm like, are you sure you want to do that? There's going to be 
signings and trades all over the place. And they're like, yeah, I know we're going to regret this, but it, it, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, 12 days. Like this is what happens when you cut the preseason. Why didn't they make the preseason later? Why didn't you start the preseason later? Or I, again, I'm going to go back to what I've told my Gill a bunch of times here. Why don't we start the season on Labor Day weekend? Like we used to, and things will be better, but no, I, I will answer that. I will tell you why, because college football week one is Labor Day weekend. And there's a billion dollars being spent by these television networks for college football Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That Notre Dame game is on Sunday, by the way. Sunday yes. evening, and you have Ohio State playing Thursday night. You have a ton of games on Saturday. The NFL is staying as far away from college football as possible because the networks have told them to. Which is hilarious because when Paul Tagliabue ran the ship, he didn't care. Um, you know, right. we're going to have Monday Night Football on Labor Day. Who cares, right? And, you know, they got a 15 rating, and, you know, it was ridiculous. And, again, this is back when, you know, cable was early in existence here. But still, people are going to watch college football and the NFL. If we have both on the same weekend. I'd be going absolutely crazy. And, again, I, I don't need a college football game to compete with Sunday Night Football, but we can have college football Thursday and Friday. We don't have to have the Thursday kickoff game. Everything can be Sunday, and then we can have a big Monday night game. Hell, we can have a Tuesday game if we want. I don't care. It's Again, I would love to see the NFL go back to Labor Day weekend. That was like the best time for me as a kid. Because one, I knew I was off Monday, so I could watch all the games. And two, it was just a, a weekend full of football. Like, as a Penn State fan, Penn State, Wisconsin, Saturday. Can you imagine Eagles, Falcons, Sunday? I began the best of both worlds. Week two of college football doesn't just hit the same as week one does. Jeff, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about the NFL's announcement today of their betting partnership. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because of who's not on the list. Because Caesar. not Caesars, not FanDuel, not DraftKings. It literally is everyone else. And honestly, Jeff, I kind of gave it the side eye because for years, the official fantasy sports partner was either DraftKings or FanDuel for every team. Now... Both of those organizations thought they were getting an in with the NFL when they came with the sports books, and now they're being told, get out of here, we're going with somebody else. And it's hilarious because Caesars is kind of partnered with CBS, which is one of the NFL's broadcast partners, but Fox Bet is too, which is interesting. And I, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I went to Lincoln Financial Field for a media tour, and they had the Fox Bet Lounge. I said, what's going on here? Like, why are you partnering with Fox Bet? And then, it, you know, it kind of hit me, you know, you know, when everything came out today. But, yeah, I, I agree, Josh. Like, all of a sudden, you're ostracizing FanDuel and DraftKings because they're the leaders in the clubhouse and they're good at everything they do. It's almost like, okay, we don't need FanDuel and DraftKings to be the monopoly, so we got to do this. And, you know, we got to give Fox a chance. We got to give this this irrelevant guy a points bet. Oh, oh, fast. Now we get to see Alan Oxen go fast every every Sunday. So, <laughs> I, again, we get to see Paige Fairnack every week. You know, is that I, is I, that who that woman is? I always wondered who that woman is on that Fox that uh, points bet thing. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, my dad's a... It, Wait, isn't that the golfer? I said, yep, that's her. So Okay, that's her. All right. Yeah, so that's how I laugh about the whole thing. And, you know, it's, it's – oh, by the way, points bet's kind of with NBC too. So it's, you know, again, as a CBS employee, we're kind of getting the shaft here because we're with William Hill and now Caesars. So, again, it's it's just a weird thing who they picked. Like, when I first read I'm like, Vandal? And where's Vandal? Where's DraftKings right. at? You know? Where's Caesars? C yeah. Caesars is – Caesars William Hill is the official sports book of ESPN, for example. OK, yeah. so you said told ESPN and CBS bye bye. And you said thumbs up to Fox bet. Yeah, I, I don't get it. And plus, I mean, Josh, you know, FanDuel's programming like uh, overall, like they're on they're everywhere right now. Like like their their shows are legit good. And Promo code Hennig right here. There you go. Yeah, exactly. There, there you go. Like, you know, Ariel Epstein's one of the best in the business right now. And, you know, you're given, you know, shows like the morning after a shaft. Are you kidding me right now? Like. It's the same with DraftKings. Like you're you're literally ostracizing them. They they are they're the two I used. Like, and I'm not even a gambler, but the apps I have, FanDuel, uh, Caesars, and and DraftKings. I, I mean, really, they're it. And I just do that to check lines and stuff. I don't even bet. So it, it's really interesting for sure. And I'm curious to see what other leagues do over the coming months. Like, because I feel like they can take advantage of the whole FanDuel DraftKings thing now that the NFL decides to say, oh, bye-bye, uh, uh, we don't need you because, oh, by the way, you made our league even more popular when ratings were going down. Right. By the way, um, if, if anybody who hasn't read it, I interviewed the author a couple of years ago, 
billion dollar fantasy about the war between FanDuel and DraftKings over the last 10 years. It was by uh, Sports Illustrated's Albert Chen. Must read. Read that book and then look at this NFL news. You are going to lose your mind. You think we think we're looked at by now? Read that book. It's called uh, Billion Dollar Fantasy by Andrew Chen. It's a must read because that book really breaks down how much FanDuel and DraftKings have invested getting into the NFL. By the way, John, I got to point this out. And I have a lot of friends that are like this. I swear. Like, everybody calls the NFL now, oh, it's like arena football. You know they do that for fantasy and betting. That's why they do it. That's why the rules are so light. Like, I watch a ton of 80s, 90s football games. There's barely any mention of fantasy football. And that was when it was kind of getting popular in its infancy. Like, when Fox debuted the ticker, like, everybody's like, oh, you can check your fantasy scores. I'm like, who cares? Like, now it's, (laughs) oh, G.D. Lamb, he caught a touchdown against my favorite team, but he's on my fantasy team. Like, come on, man. Like, you know, it, it, it's red zone, man. That's what red zone's for. Yeah, exactly. That's what red zone's for. So watch red zone. Like I, I, again, like the NFL tries to ostracize the two things why people still watch football. Because I, I think football's range would go even more down. And again, this is the power of the NFL. But football's range would go even more down, just like baseball, just like basketball, just like all of them. If fantasy football and you know sports betting, daily sports betting weren't on top. Jeff Kerr, CBS Sports, at Jeff Kerr, CBS on Twitter. Check him out. He'll be back on Wednesday edition of the show. Jeff, have a good one. We'll catch you Wednesday. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, Josh.